Hi there, Henrik here, also known as Bugs. Let me start thanking you for watching this video. In this episode of my InfoSec tutorial series, I'm addressing LLMNR poisoning. I'll first provide you with a brief explanation on what LLMNR exactly is, and after I'll showcase how to exploit LLMNR poisoning. LLMNR is a protocol of Microsoft, and it's enabled by default on all Windows devices. Therefore, it might be actually interesting to know what it is. Microsoft states, The goal of linked local multicast name resolution LMNR is to enable name resolution in scenarios in which conventional DNS name service is not possible. LMNR supports all current and future DNS formats, types and classes while operating on a separate port from DNS and with a distinct resolver cache. Since LMNR only operates on a local link, it cannot be considered a substitute for DNS. Is it clear for you? It isn't for me. So allow me to explain it more in detail. From an attacker point of view, you want LMNR to be triggered by an outdated script which tries to connect to a network share which does no longer exist, or a user trying to connect to an invalid network location, for example, Google with three O's, or, and this brings us to our example, to the local print server, but the user made a typo and he tries to connect to the local pint server. So the user tries to connect to the local pint server. Upon that request to the local DNS server within the internal network, the DNS is gonna say, I don't know what pint server is, I can't resolve your host name. Then the host is gonna check its own host file. Is pint server unlisted in here? Of course it's not. Finally, it will send out a LLMNR broadcast request, requesting to the internal network is anybody in here pin server? This is where the attacker will go and impersonate being pin server and say, yes, that's me. Can you please authenticate sending your NT on V2 hash? Of course, the target can and it is going to answer with, all right, here's my NT on V2 hash, no problem. So now you have captured the NT on V2 hash. In a best case scenario, the attacker warns the NTLMV0 hash and that is similar to a Windows user password. Therefore, we try to relay the NTLMV2 hash to a system where our compromised user is the local administrator. Since local admins can dump the SAMP database, we can obtain NTLMV0 hash from our compromised domain user. Now you might be thinking, my compromised user is not a local administrator on any of the systems, so I can't dump the SAMP database. Well, then you have two options. I'll name them enumeration. Um, cracking isn't really enumeration, but you can. It is possible to crack an NTLMV2 hash. It will take a lot of time and a lot of resources, but it is possible. Uh, another way, and this is more enumeration style, is relay the user. We have talked on it before to dump the SAM database, but you just can relay uh, the user also to a machine where he is no local administrator. And what you can do then is, for example, read the SMB file share or something like it and gather some information which fits the bigger picture and obtain a completer uh, picture of your victim. By now, I honestly hope I scared you just a little bit, because honestly, you should be scared. LMNR poisoning is a real strong vulnerability from an attacker point of view, and is enabled by default on all Windows devices. In this slide, I will inform you on how to prevent your network from LMNR poisoning. A first implementation focuses on the more general risk of relaying credentials over the network. Therefore, you should put SMB v2 signing to a required state. By default, it is set to enabled, but not required. Making this required will deny an attacker to relay credentials over your network. The next two implementations focus on disabling LMNR, the real core issue of this presentation. And the first thing to do is to disable NetBIOS over TCP IP. And a second implementation is to disable the GPO enable multicast name resolution. So you are disabling a GPO which enables LMNR. I realize I've been whining plenty, so let's dive into a demo.
Now, before we get our hands dirty, it is important to understand what the actual network topology looks like. I have set up a home lab those local Active Directory, um, Group LLC, EOU, and two departments, IT and X. Department IT has a uh, server, Windows 2011 server, and has a user, John Doe Admin. Department X has a computer Windows 10 client and that is actually the home computer of the user John Doe. Uh, there are two other users as well, Jan Janssen and Max Mustermann. Now as you might have noticed there are two John Doe's. Uh, John Doe is a system administrator uh, but he has a normal account and a normal account he should use for all uh, normal use. Um, and the admin account is only to uh, modify things on the server so he can do as little as possible wrong however John he's a little bit lazy so since he doesn't really like to switch accounts uh, and he should have to remember different passwords John only uses or mostly uses his administrator account also on the computer Windows 10 client now um, since John Administrator is also a local administrator at Windows Server 2011, uh, we are able to uh, capture and show you the example of uh, how he gets compromised using the SMB relay attack as well. So let's fire up our Kali Linux. We will first launch uh, NTLM relay uh, in packets. NTLM. Uh, I made a typo and um, packet until I'm relay X. We specify the target. We are about to relay our credentials to it. That's the Windows 2011 server where John is a local administrator. Uh, we can also specify multiple targets using dash tf target file. Um, if you don't know where he is a local administrator, which will be the case if you're doing an internal pen test. I really uh, recommend doing this as one of the first things when you do a uh, internal pen tests. Uh, just allow this to run and see what you capture. Uh, we first set up NTLM Relay X and then we do uh, set up Responder. Uh, why we do it in this way is because Responder blocks ports that NTLM Relay X should be using. So you can modify it as well as I did uh, in the config file, uh, den deny or uh, the, the server creation of a HTTP, HTTPS and a Samba file share. Um, I've done so, so it doesn't really matter for me anymore, but it might matter for you. Um, so be cautious on that one, RDWV. Uh, this is what the responder command actually looks like and why we specify ETH1 is because it's the uh, interface we want to uh, listen on. So let's do it like this one. And we're listening for events. Now let's move on to our pin server, uh, our um, Windows 10 client, and we will try to connect to pin server over print server. It is all already uh, entered because I had to record this video twice. I recorded this video the first time without uh, voiceover, so I had to re record it. Um, doing the request, we'll see what happens. Can't really be surprised since I actually know it already. But we see a pop-up coming. The ser specified service cannot, server cannot perform the request operation. Okay, let's now look at our Kali, and we see that there are three uh, requests to pin server. Why is this one? Because uh, the service we just ran uh, couldn't connect and tries to do it over again and um, something like that. So we we see three times uh, LMNR. Uh, poisoning uh, request being sent over to, to uh, the host and what Responder does it just sends over the NTLM v2 which it captures over to the impacted NTLM relay so it sends it over to the 10.0.0.2 we see our connection coming in from our Windows 10 client attacking the Windows server attacking the Windows server as John Doe admin of course and we see it succeeds Scrolling down a little bit, because this is all interesting but not so relevant to the topic, we see that he tries to dump the local SAM. And over here, we actually have the administrator NTLM v0 hash. You can pass this part of the hash over with 
for example, Crack Map Exec or Evil WinRAM, and you can successfully log on since this is actually quite equal to a Windows password. Congrats! Now let's move on to the Wireshark file. I have captured it in the previous uh, request. Excuse me. Uh, so let's remove this one and we'll, I'll guide you just through it once again. We see that at first the Windows 10 client tries to connect to the uh, DNS server. In our scenario, it's the uh, AD server as well, the do domain controller. Um, requests if he knows pin server, the DNS server re responds with, I don't know what you're talking about. And then let's uh, take the IP of the attacker because we want to analyze what happens there. We see the MBNS, MDNS, and here is what we, this topic is all about. LM and all. We send back to the victim, uh, to the Windows clients, like, yes, it's me, pin server. And then we start the TCMP protocol, as we can see over here. Now then, we want to relay our credentials to the uh, other server and we are doing it over uh, SMB2. Uh, just to give you a quick heads up, we authenticate as HomeLab JDO Administrator. Uh, it is successful. We can connect to EPC, IPC, and it's doing all kind of stuff that is relevant to the relaying topic, not so much to the LMNR topic. Uh, lots of files as well, and finally uh, it d has dumped the SAM database and uh, disconnects and uh, disconnects the connection. And what all of that meant is that we just have captured this one. This one is what this video was all about. We can just log in using dash hash. I hope I really learned you something new. I hope I informed you about how to prevent your systems from all of this happening. Uh, disable your NetBIOS over TCP IP. Uh, modify, enable your, uh, or disable your GPO rather that enables multi LMR. Um, disable, uh, no, no, I should say, enable uh, being required to uh, sign in if you're trying to relay credentials. Uh, which all of that allows this to happen and this is really something you do not want within your network. Thus, I hope to you have learned something uh, incredibly new, uh, something useful. Uh, if you thought this was useful, just give it a thumbs up. Um, leave comments below with some feedback and make sure to follow this channel because I will definitely post more videos in the future, uh, more tutorials, more InfoSec talks. Uh, so make sure to follow my channel and give a thumbs up for this video. Thank you and see you in the next video.